And welcome back once again to the Ask Coach Wendy Show. Alongside Wendy Mater, I'm Dave Erickson. Wendy, when was the first marathon you had ever run? 1997 Kona Ironman World Championship. Your first marathon was within an Ironman race? It was my very first marathon, yep. And my first Ironman, I actually had my first goo at mile two of my first marathon of my first Ironman. <laughs> there was a lot of firsts in 1997. Uh, just some perspective, how did you get to Kona? Was it a 70.3 World Championship qualifier? How'd you um, get there? Yeah, there, there was before there were actually 70.3s. It was called um, Desert Sun Half Ironman in Grand Junction, Colorado. And I had lived in Colorado for two years, and I did that race. Okay. Um, and it was, a, it was a half. I crossed the finish line. I literally drank a half water bottle during that race. I cramped. I crossed the finish line. I said, there's no way I'm doubling this distance. And then I got a slot. And I'm like, oh, cool. I get to go. <laughs> you did your Never first marathon, marathon in an Ironman. All right. Let's 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 kind of break this down for those who aren't as ambitious. Let's talk about some marathon training tips for these open marathons. So what's, what's the first thing you kind of tell athletes when they think about taking on this journey? Um, give yourself, number one, give yourself plenty of time to train for it. Um, it is a journey. Um, it is a destination, but it's also going to probably lead to a new lifestyle. So um, I used to coach um, athletes who were given a training plan by a certain company, and it was only four months long, and these athletes were like kind of off the couch, off the couch to marathon, and four months was just not enough time to get these athletes ready to enjoy the marathon experience, you know, a lot of them got hurt or injured and, and then they kind of, they kind of put a negative, you know, connotation to the marathon training because it was too, too much too soon. So first and foremost, definitely give yourself plenty of time. I'm training for my first marathon, meaning I've never trained just for a marathon before and I'm doing Boston next year and I started training four weeks ago just to give myself six months even though I'm in shape, I want to give myself six months to focus on the proper buildup to a strong marathon. Now, when you're doing the training, do you, um, for some of your longer runs, because I know you've done marathons in the past, but when mm -hmm. maybe getting to that point, um, how do you map out your route and fuel yourself properly? Um, a lot of times I will... I will do multiple loops of a route. Like if I'm going to do, a, let's just say, an 18-miler, I'll do a, a six-mile course three times. Okay. So I can just stop at home. Um, living in Colorado, we have the luxury of having bike paths to run on mm -hmm. and in easy access to gas stations or, or parks to go to the bathroom, refill our bottles. So it's kind of easy to do here. Mm -hmm. But um, fueling is important. Um, when I used to coach this team, as a coach, I would go out and put out aid stations or I would be the, in the car with the aid for these athletes and, and helping them along the way so they didn't have to carry it all. But it's important. How about heart rate training with marathoning, or is that too specific? No, that's actually the next point I want to make is um, be specific in, to your training and your fitness level. Um, I like to do a baseline fitness test, like a 5K event. Mm. So from that 5K event, I not only get my 5K training time, but I get my 5K um, average heart rate. So then I can use that as, as um, my lactate threshold heart rate, and then I can take my 5K time and plug it into a run training calculator, and that calculates all my paces. Mm -hmm. So then I know my recovery pace is something, my endurance pace is something, my tempo pace, my interval pace. So then um, I'm not training in that gray zone, and I'm actually saying, okay, Tuesday track, this is the pace I need to train at. Because, you know, 25 years ago when I started this sport, I would go balls to the walls and I'd get hurt because mm -hmm. I went too hard. Mm -hmm. I thought track meant you go as hard as you could. But no, you're supposed to, you know, do track workouts according to your current fitness. Do your long runs at your pace. Don't do them at a pace that you think you should be doing it at. Ah. So when you get that, um, that kind of that baseline number, like a 5K time as well as heart rate, it helps set your training to be more purposeful, which I think is important for marathon training. When you set a purpose to each workout, for me, it's more enjoyable. And just a caution that every training plan is usually catered to that athlete and their experience and their fitness level. So we're kind of just doing generalized ideas here. Right, right. Um, exactly. One thing that you've taught me a lot about and, and that I've kind of self-educated is uh, working on uh, parts of the body that aren't strictly run run related. So 
supporting parts of your body. So don't just be a runner 24 seven. Right. I think the cross training is important. The core, the core strength, strengthening your, um, your spine, your, your, your abs, your hips, your shoulders, um, is, is, you know, instead of pounding the pavement every single day, you know, focus on your key workouts and then do some cross training, like weight room training, strengthen those glutes. That's the powerhouse. Of, that's the running muscle, running powerhouse muscle. Um, and on, on that note, also thinking about form, especially when you get tired. Um, a marathon's a long way to go, and more than likely, even for elite runners, their form is going to break down at some point. So when you're constantly training and focusing on your form, especially when you get tired, that's only going to lead to less in- risk of injury. And as opposed to cycling or swimming, where it's much less impact, the recovery aspect of running uh, is key, and it's not just a matter of, oh, I'm going to run five days a week or six days a week. More running is not better, right? Correct. Yeah. You know, and again, a lot of that has to do with experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but this day and age, most of the, the research is going to tell you focus on, you know, three key workouts and get rid of the, the junk, what they call it, junk miles. Um, and, and for some athletes, those junk miles are still purposeful. Again, if you're someone like me, I've been doing this for 25 years, my body's adapted to that. Mm-hmm. But um, running is a lot of impact on your body. And if you don't have the proper technique, most people don't when they're first starting. Mm-hmm. You're, you're leading more risk for injury, and if you keep running more and more and more with improper technique, again, you're just setting yourself up for injury. And I, just we have a minute left. Um, three key workouts. Are you talking about like a track workout, interval workout, and long run? What would um, more or less? I think as a beginner, I, w- I would talk about a long run, maybe a recovery run, and maybe either a track um, or tempo run or okay. hills. Like like track, tempo, and hills would be one. Mm-hmm. maybe a recovery day, and then a long run day with the emphasis, especially on the beginner of that long run. Okay. That's, like, that's like the key workout. And one other point I wanted to make, you can't make up missed workouts. So if you miss, if you miss a couple workouts, don't try to say, okay, now I'm going to do an extra long run. Mm-hmm. I missed a three and a five miler, and I have an eight miler today. I might as well do 16. <laughs> that's, again, that's only going to set you up for injury. So don't make up missed workouts. To learn much more about running tips and suggestions, go visit t2coaching.com. Wendy's got a great website and multiple categories there for the endurance athlete or an athlete with a specific goal in mind. So thanks a lot, Wendy. Appreciate it. Thank you.